<laughs> oh. Let's go. oh, hello, we're live. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello and welcome everybody to the live stream. My name is Gabriel Santos. I am the collections manager and outreach coordinator for the Raymond M. Alf Museum of Paleontology here in Claremont, California, just outside Los Angeles. And I will be your fossil master of ceremonies for today's event. I'm here with the hosts of PBS Eons and part of the team behind SciShow. So let's go ahead and say hello to everybody and everybody introduce yourself. Callie, why don't we start with you? Hey everybody, I'm Callie. I'm a host on Eons. I do a whole bunch of other stuff and I'm also the collections manager at the University of Montana Paleontology Center. Welcome, Callie. Blake, what about you? Uh, I am Blake DePastino. I am a science journalist who is now head of content for Complexity, which is a production company that makes Eons and SciShow. And um, I am a co-host and co-producer for Eons and I am a Gemini. Oh, very nice. Libra. Woo. Okay. Michelle, you're up. Hey, everyone. My name is Michelle Barbosa Ramirez. I am the newest co-host of PBS Eons. And in my infinite spare time, I also work as a professor at Cal State Fullerton. So come take my classes. We'll have fun. And we watch Eons videos because, you know. Isn't that kind of like cheating a little bit for your teaching? Oh, classes? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just so we're all clear. Also, fun fact for everybody, Michelle and I went to school together. So yeah, go Titans. <laughs> I don't think I all right. that. Oh. Really? Does that, yeah, we, does we that give the Eons together. team an unfair advantage? No, no, no. It actually <laughs> gives me <laughs> the advantage it because I've known Michelle for so long. <laughs> oh. I'm, all right, on, now. I'm on their team and I'm suspicious already. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on to Team SciShow. Sarah, let's start with you. Hi, I'm Sarah Suda. I am a producer on SciShow, and I am also producer and co-host on Bizarre Beasts. Welcome. Savannah. Hi, I am Savannah Geary. I am an assistant editor for SciShow's YouTube and an associate producer and host for SciShow's TikTok. Welcome. And last but not least, Stefan. Hello. I'm one of the hosts on the SciShow channel, and I guess I spend most of my time editing videos. And I think I'm still in Aries. Because didn't they change it? I don't know. <laughs> it's not my area of expertise. Well, if there's anyone in the comments who can help us out with, or in the in the chat can help us out with that, we we'll can figure that out later. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Today we are celebrating National Fossil Day with a little game we're calling Fossil Few: Team Eons versus Team SciShow. So for those of you who may not know, National Fossil Day is hosted every year by the National Park Service and the American Geosciences Institute. It was started back in 2010 to promote public awareness and stewardship of fossils, as well as to foster great appreciation of their scientific and educational value. As a paleontologist myself, I can tell you that this is like Christmas for us, so it's a really fun day. <laughs> so today's game, the game will start with a face-off between one member from each team. The winner will earn their team a shot at answering the questions that round. Three wrong answers will give the other team a chance to steal the round and earn some points. The team with the most points at the end of the four question rounds will be crowned champions of deep time and earn bragging rights for the rest of the year. Stakes are really high, y'all. So we want to thank the e Eons patrons for coming up with the questions for Fossil Feud and the Eons audience for answering the survey for the answers for today. After the game, the Eons team will also be answering some of your questions. So be sure to drop your questions in the chat throughout. Now that we've got things started, we are going to transition into round one. Starting up, we've got Callie and Stefan are up first. Since we only have so much room on our screen, everyone else is going to be removed just momentarily, but they'll still be watching what's happening from backstage. Go and Callie! also because. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you all ready? Now, because we don't have a buzzer, once I read the question, you have to clap. And the first person to clap, I will call on to answer the question. All right, sound good? I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. All right. All right. Let's move on to our very, very first question. Name a species of dinosaur the movies got wrong. Callie. Velociraptor. Velociraptor. Survey says. Ding, ding. Velociraptor is number one. 
Great job. Okay, so since Callie got it, that means we're going to be bringing in Team Eons for the rest of this round. Sorry, Steven. Stefan. All right, welcome back, Team Eons. So, again, the question here is the species, name a species of dinosaur the movies got wrong. So since Callie went, we're going to move on to Michelle. Any movie? That is what the prompter tells me, so yes. <laughs> My God. Uh, let's go with Spinosaurus. Oh, Spinosaurus. Boy. Great one. Well, Survey says, about him. Spinosaurus is on the board. Good job, huh, Michelle. Okay. All right, Blake, you're up. What's next? I have a question for my teammates, but am I allowed to do that? No, I don't think so for this am one. I, allowed to, I have to re rely on my own intelligence or lack of it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I, I have so. to say T-Rex. T-Rex. For a number Survey of reasons. Survey says... Number Let's two, go. there you go. T-Rex, king of the dinosaurs. Great job. All right, moving back to Callie. Um, let's say um, like Brontosaurus. Brontosaurus survey says. Brontosaurus Ooh. is on the board. Great job. Good job. Looks like some of you have been watching your dinosaur movies. Okay. All right, oh. Michelle, you're up. I want to say the little one that spits venom, but I can't remember its name. That's what I was going to ask you, right? Oh no! Right. You guys, well, I don't know its name. It's the venom. If you don't target. remember it, I'll 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 say it next. I know its name. <laughs> I'm gonna say I think this is gonna be wrong, but they got Indominus Rex wrong because it's not a real dinosaur. That was my uh, okay. All right, Indominus, is it on the board? Has to be right. Oh, oh, oh that's what I was gonna so say. So sorry, Michelle. I took Dominus the hit for you, Blake. That Dominus Rex is not on the board because it's not a real species of dinosaur. So very sorry. All right, moving on to Blake. Think, Blake. Think. 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 See, the, the the here's a fun fact about Callie. Every time she travels in a plane, we've we've traveled a lot together. Uh, she watches Jurassic Park. I do. And so okay. I've seen that movie as many times as she and I have gone to like a conference or something together. And I can't Several. remember the name of the thing. Um, okay, there's a, the Mosasaurus, but that's not a dinosaur. Um, All right, time's almost up. Triceratops. Triceratops. All right, on the board. Yes, yeah. Triceratops on the board. That's okay, this is thinking of like the prick, wasn't it pregnant or no, it had. It was, it had, it had it gastrointestinal sick, issues. But its horns were already like cracked and fossilized. It's like so bizarre. Like, no, no, no. It'd be covered <laughs> with like fingernail material. It looked good. They'd look fine. They wouldn't be all cracked and stuff. Anyways. Well, <laughs> quick fun fact for all of you watching at home Triceratops gets the short end of the dino accuracy stick in two different Jurassic Park movies. In Jurassic World, we see these dinos galloping, which was probably faster. Oh, that's not right. There you go. Which is faster than they could have moved in life. In the original Jurassic Park, there was no way a single Triceratops, even a sick one, could have made a pile of poop that big. I should have read these beforehand. That's anyway. <laughs> yep. I always wondered that, too. I was like, how high is their cloaca off the ground? My goodness, are they, like, shoveling it themselves? <laughs> yeah, maybe it, was maybe it was explosive. I don't know. It was eating those really bad berries. Right, right. The West India lilac or whatever it was. <laughs> I know that movie too much. <laughs> All right. Great job. Michelle, your turn. You still have two more chances be before your team goes extinct. Okay. We'll go with a real dinosaur this time, guys. Fine. As a paleontology show, that makes sense. Show me Pachycephalosaurus. Ooh. Pachycephalosaurus. Let's see. Is that on the board? Wow. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Wow. 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 The boneheaded dinosaur is not on here. All right, Blake, this one's for all the fossils. <laughs> now I wish I had seen more or remember more of those movies. Fun fact, I have not watched Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom yet. <gasps> I haven't either. I'll think. What? No. Oh, my gosh. I know. I know. Movie night. <sighs> Movie night. Okay, yeah, because I'm we haven't Blake. traveled. That's why I haven't seen any of this movie. I believe All in right, you. Blake. We'll have Kelly in every dinosaur, so we'll never forget again. <laughs> um, 
So if Blake gets this wrong, Team SciShow will then have a chance to steal the remaining points. I'm looking at my Blake. dinosaur trail poster to get inspiration. I mentioned laughter. There's like another laughter of some kind that I'm trying to think of. Um, Time's almost up. Okay. Um, 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 think, like, think, 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 think. Dinosaurs. Uh, Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus. Is that survey says? Uh, oh, oh no. so very sorry. A Patasaurus is not on the board. Honk that means you. Team SciShow is Honk now extinct. You. Very Bye. sorry. We're going to have to hurl a meteor at you, wipe you off the board, and now let's bring in Team SciShow. <laughs> All right, Team SciShow, welcome to the game. So the question was... Name a species of dinosaur the movies got wrong. All right. So if you get one, if you get, you get to answer, I'll talk together to answer this question. If you get the X, then we move on to the next round. Cool. Uh, I think we want, do we want to go with the one from Jurassic, the spitting one from Jurassic yeah. Park? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Seems like a good one. Go for it. It is Dilophosaurus, right? I don't think I'm. Totally Dilophosaurus so. survey right. says, "Ding, ding, ding! Yay. You got it! Dilophosaurus Ooh. is on the board. So now that means you get to continue uh, the round for the rest of the points. So since Sarah said it, let's move on to Stefan. Oh God, do I know more dinosaurs? <laughs> um, but we can we can discuss, right? Can we? Um, uh, can no, we not at this part. Oh no! Oh, okay. Okay. Like, oh. Part. Uh, me. Uh, Let's say Brachiosaurus. Somebody's got to have gotten that wrong. Brachiosaurus on the board. Hey! hey. hey. Good job, Team SciShow. <laughs> All right, Savannah, you're up. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus, survey says. Hey! Yeah. Good job! Look at that. So... <laughs> Now that means that is we are now at the end of round two, moving on to round one. So let's bring in the rest of everybody. Wow. So fun fact, as Yay. everybody joins us, velociraptors from Jurassic Park are about twice the size of the dinosaur they're based on and should have had feathers. Also, velociraptor are actually from Mongolia and Asia. So fun fact for you all at home. All right. Great nice job, everybody. Good. That was a really fun round one. So now it's time to move on to round two. Everybody again will be leaving except for Michelle and Savannah facing off for round two. Woo woo! Go, Michelle! Yay, have fun! <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> All right, you ready, Michelle, Savannah? You got your hands ready? Okay, once I ask you a question, clap. First one will be able to answer the round. The question is Name an ancient animal that flew. Savannah, <gasps> SciShow. Pterosaur. Pterosaur. For that one, I'm going to have to ask you to be a little bit more specific. Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus. All right. Survey says. It's on the board. Great job. I am so sorry, Michelle. We're going to have to say goodbye to you and bring in the rest of SciShow. Good job, Savannah. See, I'm not cheating just because I knew. So if if SciShow becomes the the <laughs> rulers of deep time does eons have to be have to start making Ooh. just episodes about like i don't know normal time or something <laughs> they, they start making scishow episodes we start oh making there you go oh, God. there yes. you go Ooh, <laughs> like freaky it's like freaky friday, freaky friday. fossil yeah. friday fossil there you go <laughs> ah. <laughs> all right so moving on since savannah answered that question we're going to move on to stefan the question was, name oh, an boy. ancient animal that flew. I know one that doesn't fly. <laughs> uh, Archaeopteryx? Did, did Archaeopteryx. All right, let's see. Survey said. There you go. It's on the board. Good All job. Right. Archaeopteryx, one of the earliest known flying or er, birds in the fossil record. So good job. All right, Sarah, you are up. 
Okay, I'm going to say the easy one that I hope the name has not been like, oh, that's not a thing anymore. Pterodactyl? Pterodactyl. Let's see if that's on the board. It's the oh, number one goodness. answer. Yeah. Good job. I was worried that was like, oh, that name, no one has used that since 1973. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, SciShow is in the lead. Oh, dang. And that means we're going to keep moving on. As Since this is um, Fossil Feud, I think we're going to uh, sorry, I saw something in the corner of my eye. All right, Savannah, you're up. Uh, my mind is totally blank. I cannot think of another <laughs> flying ancient animal. <laughs> um, some kind of bat ancestor. <laughs> I think we're going to have to be a little bit more specific than that. I cannot be. <laughs> I regret to inform you. All right. On the board, some kind of bat ancestor. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Oh, well. Icaronicterus. Good job. Looks like the producers allowed that. Yes. So good job. <laughs> Dang. So I fun fact, that. Icaronicterus is one of the oldest bats we have in the fossil record, actually. So good job. All right, moving on. Stefan. I, I also am drawing a blank. Ah. <laughs> uh... It is survival of the fittest here on Fossil Feud. So will you be able to find the answer in your head? I didn't watch enough eons. Um, we, we all agreed we would cram. <laughs> I did, but I watched Megalodon instead. Uh, Time's almost up. Is, is Tyrannodon... A Pteranodon? Thing? All right, let's see. Survey says. Oh, oh, okay. Good job. Look at That's Pteranodon. all I've got, though. Pteranodon <laughs> is another pterosaur. Okay. So you've got it on the board. Good job. So there is only one more answer left. Jeez. Sarah, it is up to you to take oh, a no. round. Oh, no. Um, uh, being specific or not specific is, is the <laughs> trick here. Uh, I want to say, like, an ancient... Odinate, like dragonflies, or yeah, like ancient insects, uh, either an Odinate or an Ephemeropteran. Um, but yeah, ancient insect. Ancient insect, is it on the yeah. board? No, no, so sorry, strike one. All right, you still have two more chances to take the round. Savannah. You know, you got one out of me when there was nothing here. <laughs> I do not have an answer. <laughs> No answer? Does that nope. mean we get to automatically give an X? I think it means we automatically give an X. I am so sorry. All right, Stefan. Now it's up to you. Uh, Will you go extinct? Will we have to wipe you off the board? What's the name of an ancient dragonfly? <laughs> I don't think that's going to be on the board, I will say. Uh, I, yeah, I don't think I have another one in me. This feels real bad. Oh, feels bad. So sorry. <laughs> team SciShow, you are now extinct. We're going to have to bring in PBS <laughs> Eon's team now. Sorry about that. Dang. We'll see you all in just a little bit. And for all of you at home, oh. if you don't want to end up like Team SciShow, make sure you like and subscribe to PBS Eons. Amazing. All right. PBS Eons. This is Point of Order, Professor Thank Santos. You. No. I think that they should have points deducted because Stefan said that he watched Megalodon. <laughs> and I should cost them but did he mean points. that he watched our Megalodon episode? Or the Meg. Yeah. No. Wait, do we get to discuss we get to discuss, you get this, to discuss one, right? this part? Yeah. I was also thinking okay. Mega Nura. Mega Nura. Yeah. Mega Nura. Okay. Okay. I was thinking that, but I was. 13 foot wingspan dragonflies. Like, you know, two feet, but yeah. Um, or oh. Ramparinkus, the one with the pterosaur with like the the really ancient one um, that uh, Mary Anning dug up. Oh, uh, those are the two. My two guesses is Meganira or Ramparinkus. I was thinking about uh, birds like Argent Davis or something. Well, well Anki Orn. Time is running out. Anki Orn. Uh, uh, Micro Raptor. Uh, the one yeah. with the the wings on on the front and the legs. 
what would what would our our, our viewers have guessed, right? Because this is That's survey smart. says. So I feel like it's not going to be another pterosaur. It's going to be something else. I wonder. Do they know? Well, it's like they guessed giant insect, but it was no. But was it not enough? Ooh. Oh no! Let's go for it. Oof, this what? answer Which is one? as elusive as the, the missing link. The giant insect. Okay, Meganura. Yep. Meganura, no, survey. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. so, so sorry. Uh, you guys tried. Maybe you guys should watch more of your episodes too. Oh. All right, survey says. Uh -huh. The final answer was micro. Oh my god! You had it. Oh. oh, so sorry. Let's bring in everybody. And for a fun fact for everyone at home, all of you Eons fans in the audience might already know this, but pterosaurs are flying reptiles, not dinosaurs. The two flying dinosaurs in their survey answers are Archaeopteryx and Microraptor. Microraptor. Both of them probably glided or flew in ways that are totally different from living birds. So. Coming off of round two, it is SciShow in the lead with 560 hey. points. Man, oh, Blake, wow. you got to clap it's... fast. Clap fast. <laughs> uh -oh. End of sentence, clap fast. But you can't wait. There's no breath at the end oh, of it. Man. Clap oh, man. fast. <laughs> All right. Pressure is mounting. All right. Moving on to round three. Blake and Sarah, you oh, are up. You got this, Sarah. Heck, heck. Come on, Blake, clap back. <laughs> okay, wait. Whoa, okay. All right. Okay. All right, really quick, practice claps, everybody. One, two, three. All right, good. All right. Now, the question is for round three. Name one of Earth's extinction events. Uh, ah, Blake, you are you are first. Okay. Name an extinction event. The KPG. KPG extinction. Is that on the board? It is. Good job. It looks like Sarah, we're gonna have to say goodbye to you and bring in yeah, Team I... Eons. I knew something. Yes, Blake. <laughs> Good, job, Good Blake. job. Here we go. All right, same as last time, each of you are gonna go through, answer and see if it's on the board. If you get three X's, we're gonna have to make another extinction event and take you off the board, all right? So Blake, since you went, Michelle, you are up. The end one and Triassic survey says it's on the board. Good job, forty points. Woo. All right, Callie. Uh, the Permian, the Great Dying. Great Dying is that it's on the board? Be, if it's not number one, no. Number yeah. one answer. Good Let's job. Go. All right, oh, yeah. number three. Blake, you are up uh, again already. <laughs> <laughs> um. The, I'm allowed to. We can't talk about this. No, nope, we no, can't talk about this one. Sorry. Um, the, uh, uh, Time's running out. The Ensilurian? Ensilurian. Is that on the board? Looks like it's not. So Ugh. sorry, Blake. All right, Michelle. I think, Blake, what you were trying to say was the End Ordovician. Oh, yes. It borders the Silurian. So yep. it says, there you go. I'll give Michelle you coming in clutch. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, your your geologic history class is coming in handy, Michelle. Oh, yeah. All right, Callie, you are up. Uh, the end Devonian extinction. Devonian extinction survey says, ding, ding. Correct. It looks like Team Eons is coming back on top. I'm not biased at all, I promise. Blake, you are up. Uh, okay. We did the Great Dying. We did KPG, Devonian, Ordovician, which should have been called the Silurian. Um, That's interesting. We've got the big five. Hmm. Hmm. Um, what about, like, the Pleistocene extinction? Pleistocene extinction. Let's see. Slash ice age. Nope. So sorry. Ooh, melted under pressure, oh. just like the ice age. All right, Michelle, you're up. <laughs> okay. So like Kelly said, we have the big five. So these are kind of like wild cards. I'm going to go with 
the great oxygenation event. Oh, that's a good one. That is Survey a good one. says. It's on the board. Oh, nice. oh, yes. Thank you for watching my TikTok on that, everyone, and voting here. Mm. <laughs> yes, make sure you follow PBS Eons on TikTok. Lots of great content on there. Callie, you are up. Oh, Last man. answer. And I also, know. if you get this wrong, Team SciShow has a chance to steal. Uh, I can't believe the Megafauna Extinction, the Pleistocene one, wasn't on there. Ooh, the only other one I can. Ooh, I have an idea. The, the the PETM, the Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum. You cut. PETM is that on the board? Oh, oh, no. so <laughs> sorry. You were all so close. But it looks oh like no. This, looks like we've got ourselves our own extinction event. So goodbye, oh. Team Eons. Just like an extinction event, the survivors move on and fill in the niches. So now we've got SciShow <laughs> coming in. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. This one is to steal this point. OK. Uh, you all can converse. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going Anthropocene. Yeah? Like anthropogenic yeah. caused extinction. The right yeah. now one. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Oh, does that count? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Are we are we yeah. in the Holocene? Is that the thing? <laughs> Producer said account. So there you Yay! go. Congratulations. Oh, look at us. Good job. <laughs> so coming out of round three, Team Eons is still in the lead, but SciShow is right behind them. Oh my god. Ooh, so fun no. fact for everybody at home. Their survey answers including all of the so-called big five mass extinctions and a couple of curveballs. The great oxygenation of oxidation event and the so-called sixth mass extinction, which some scientists say we're in the middle of right now. So that was a great round. Now we're going to move on to round four. Uh, we're about to do our last face off. Who from each of your teams would like to volunteer for this round? You have a few seconds to deliberate. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I'll Guys, take what you fall. think? <laughs> you don't matter? Anybody? No? I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. You sure? All right. Okay. Sure. All right. So we're bringing in Savannah and Callie. Everybody uh, else, we'll see you in just a no minute. No pressure. Woo! Yeah, this is, a, this is it. All right. So for this final round, same as always, you will clap after I ask the question. And the question is. Name something that went extinct before the age of the dinosaurs. Callie. Um, Dimetrodon. Dimetrodon survey says. Ding, ding, ding. It's on the board. So sorry, Ooh. Savannah. All right. Okay. Now we're going to bring in the rest of Team Eons. Ooh, this one's a tough one. This, that's, I mean... That's a lot of millions of years before the, the dinosaurs. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> um, okay, can we repeat the question? Their question is, name something that went extinct before the start of the Mesozoic or the age of the dinosaurs. These are all the cool animals. <laughs> Before those lame dinosaurs showed up and ruined everything. Okay. Uh, All right. Michelle? I will say trilobites. Trilobites. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm not says. wearing the earrings today, but. Let's go. Good job. Trilobites is on the board. All right, Blake, you're up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can think of a bunch of things. I'm trying to think of what people would like. What? Right? I will give you a, like, here. Let me give you a hint. You had episodes on these. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the first thing that came to mind was Dunkleosteus. All right, Dunkleosteus. Is it on the board? There you go. Good job. All right, Callie, you're up. Um, ooh, there's so many potentials. Uh, with uh, an, an, an 
Anomala Karis. Anomala Karis survey says. Nice. Oh, good job. It's on the board. Okay. All right, Michelle. Two more. Tiktolic. Ooh. Tiktolic. Is Tiktolic on the board? He's a meme fish. He is a meme fish. Ooh, oh, no. Wow. I'm so sorry. Wow. I'm Tiktolic, Tiktolic did gains, but was not popular enough to be in this round. All right. So just a reminder, or just to let everybody know, this since this is the final round, that means if you get all three X's and Team SciShow comes in and wins, they get to steal all of the points. So the pressure is on. All right, Blake. No pressure now. You're on. Good job. <clears throat> Okay. Um, Kelly said anomalous Karis. So that's one of the first things that came to mind. Uh, so another thing, uh, Opavinia, hallucinogencia, hallucinogencia. Um, 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 and what was the other thing I was thinking? Tully Monster, because we did episodes about these things. Mm -hmm. um, Oop, time's almost up. Uh, it's probably an open video. I'm going to say Tully Monster. Tully Monster. Is that on the board? Ooh, <laughs> so sorry. Oh Might God. as well be a cryptid. Oh, oh no. Right. We're making SciShow videos because this is not this is not going oh, in our favor. I know. I, I, I have to get Callie. the business cards. <sighs> oh, it's all up to you, Kelly. I know. I'm very scared. Um they didn't go. We know too much. We know too much. Um, <laughs> this is for the champions of deep time title. I know. I know. I know. Uh, shoot. 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 That one made it. Lystrosaurus made it into the Mesozoic. But Gorgonopsids didn't. Uh, oh, no. Um, the time's running out. Oh okay. God. Okay. Okay. Um. Um, I have it too. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say, oh no, Gorgonopsid. Uh, Gorgonopsid is Gorgonopsid on the board. That's a good guess. No, oh, okay. no, shit, oh, no, so oh, sorry. No. You almost had can come that. in and steal all our points now. Yes. Every... Two answers though. Oh, they man. have SciShow Sci can steal all of the points if they get the remaining rounds. <laughs> the but they only get All one right. X, right? They only can get one X. Oh, God. Okay. Ooh. All I right. Bye, PBS no. Eons. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, All right. Boy. Welcome, SciShow. <laughs> Hello. Now, as I Ash. said earlier, if you get this answer correct, you get to steal all of the points for the round. All right? Uh. So you can deliberate. <laughs> One more time, the question was, name something that went extinct before the start of the Mesozoic Age of the Dinosaurs. Deliberate uh, now. Do we, do we try ammonites? I don't know when they went out. Like, yeah, there are just so many things I don't know the names of. Yeah. Here's a hint yeah. for you all. SciShow has not done episodes on these animals. <laughs> are you sure? Uh -oh. well, we have a lot of videos. Yeah, we have thousands. <laughs> Um, yeah. Ammonite sounds. A Ammonite feels safer than anything else we sure. came up with. Let's let's test let's I'm test down. it out. Sure. Ammonite. Ammonite is that your final answer? Sure. Wait, wrong show. Anyway, <laughs> Ammonites is it on the board? Oh hey. no! So very sorry. Because yeah. Everything else we had involved hand motions, like you know the one like in the <laughs> you know the those weird and, those weird guys, yeah, the... those weird little boys. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> reveal the rest of the answers for the audience at home. Number five was Helicoprion, the world oh, tooth shark. You... Very very. Uh, I've heard of that. That was one of that, that was this. That's the... yeah, we yeah, talked. Yeah, 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 that, that was the one. one. All right, and hand. number six. Diplocalus, the boomerang salamander thing. Oh. What now? Yeah, it's really cool. If you play yeah. Pokemon, they base yeah, a whole cute. Pokemon off of it. That's a ghost dragon type. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely Ooh. seen very beautiful dioramas of these things, but I didn't know their names. 
<laughs> All right. So that was the end of yeah. the final round. Oh, Nicely yeah. done. I would <laughs> not have guessed those at all. I was yep. so difficult, but I couldn't remember what it was called. The boomerang <laughs> salamander head guy. I, I think we would have taken boomerang slender head, boomerang salamander guy. That would have probably <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I said whirly face shark because that was the thing we, we had been. Yeah. Checking. <laughs> you know, I probably would have taken that too. Oh, that sounds good. Really cool. I was so, just wearing my helicopter on shirt a couple of days ago, and it didn't even occur to me. Fun uh, fact: uh, Ammonites actually, a little population of them actually survived the KPG, and they live oh, into the early Paleocene. Uh, so. Oh. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, good, did you know that? Them. that <laughs> Did you know that trilobites survived for almost 270 million years before the end Permian extinction took them out? That's a good run. That's like longer than the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost as long as your run in the last round, PBS Eon. <laughs> we got real close to having a rebrand. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, man. That was scary. That was scary. All right. <laughs> So now it has time to announce the champions of deep time. Looking at the final score, Eons with 1,120 and SciShow with 620. The winner is Team PBS Eons. Yay! Yay. Well done. It feels good. Congratulations to our champions of deep time. Oh. I'm and to Sasha, you all put up a real good fight. Tonight. Good yeah, job. Yeah, you did. Y'all scared me. Oh, what? That was fun. That was yeah. stressful. I was stressed. I mean, it's I only was... fun if it's close, right? Yeah. Right. I know you guys. Right. You did give us a run for our money. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, was... that is the end of our game. Oh, do you guys want to keep? Did you guys want to say? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I just thought it was really interesting watching, getting to see them talk through their their choices because they have such a deep knowledge of all of this that it's like they could go in so many different directions with all these topics and i'm over here like uh ocean scorpion is that is that a thing <laughs> i was thinking eurypterid i right. thought eurypterid was yeah. there. that was gonna yeah. be my guess or our guess or whatever diplocolis so i guess. almost wore that necklace today <laughs> man <laughs> Woo. That would even be funnier though if you missed that still and had the necklace. <laughs> like hanging from your neck. Oh yeah. god. That would have been all funny. right. So now that is the end of our game. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And now Team SciShow, it is time to head out. And the Eons team is going to stay for just a few more minutes to answer some questions for all of you. So be sure to drop your questions in the chat. So thank you, Sci thank you all SciShow for joining us, and we'll see you all online. Thank you, fam. Okay, bye. Bye, bye SciShow. All right, I guess it's time for questions. Mm -hmm. I, Man, yeah, that was super close. So once again, Kelly does not renounce the champion of deep time crown. Yeah, it's, 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 really it's, uh, it's co-owners now. We're all co-owners of the champions of deep time. Okay, so. that's probably the closest I'll ever get. Does that mean I can say I crowned the champions of deep time? Oh, heck yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take that. <laughs> I want to wear the I want to get the Game of Thrones thingy, but make it all like fossils instead. I mean, you Ooh. do have a Game of Thrones thingy, yeah. craft night game. Michelle, you should head over next. All right, next all right, week. I know what I'm okay. doing after. All right, cool. <laughs> all right. So really quick, um, we're gonna be do answering some questions from the chat, but really, but once again, thank you so much to all of the patrons, um, for eons for submitting those questions, and to everyone who voted for the top questions. All right. Yeah, great answers, viewers. Yeah. Y'all tripped us up. You did. We no we doubt. we put a lot, a lot of effort <laughs> into thinking my poor little brain was just like, but what? But what? Um, so it looks like the questions are in the Slack channel. So yeah. does anybody have access to that? Because oh, I can I sure do. I have it open right here. If you, do you want me to read them or you got it, Gabe? You want to read one for now while I get sure. my login information? The uh, first question up this evening is from Lily Egan. What are every one of your favorite extinct species? Michelle, you go first. Oh, I just got asked this question last week and it changes like from week to week, but I'm not ready this week. So I'm going to go with last week's answer. And my answer was uh, Smilodon because it is our state fossil. And I feel like this crowd of viewers already knows that every state has their own state fossil. So 
you should look into what yours is. My sleeve that I have right now is like our state flowers. I think it's about time I start my tattoo sleeve of the state fossils of states I've lived in. So currently my mind has been on Smilodons. Okay. You, Blake? Well, people who know me know that my favorite dinosaur is a Kylosaurus. Uh, because they're just like I love them with raised all of elephants. They're just like these big badasses. They can do whatever they want. But what I want to do is like eat plants to be left alone. Um, and they are covered with bony plates like armor. And I wish I was sometimes. Uh, <laughs> and I also want to put a saddle on one and ride it into battle. But um, I recently I've gotten more into hell pigs. I think since I did mm. that TikTok about them and, and just in Tilodons are fascinating to me and their behavior and um, like I'm fascinated in things that looks just, you know, they are relatively recent and they look familiar, but they are not pigs. Uh, and they, I did a TikTok about how they apparently hoarded camel bodies. <laughs> 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 yeah, like some kind of, you know, some kind of like ancient collections manager. Water. And I'm like, I got respect for that game, you know? Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm into hell pigs these days. Yeah, well, let's see. For me, yeah, Triceratops is is my favorite dinosaur, but favorite all-time extinct life. Oh, man, I don't know. I really, um, I do I do like me some Meganura. We we mentioned it earlier, and it was not an answer on, on the game. But, I mean, like a giant flying insect, like what? A, 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 a dragonfly or a griffinfly the size of a crow that's pretty nuts but also i've recently really got into glyptodons so they lived in a little bit of north america mostly central and south america they look like giant armadillos and their back plates are hexagonal each of the little osteoderms and they fit together like a beehive and they're reconstructed with like fuzzy cheeks and I also learned on the Ologies Opossum episode that um, armadillos have 72 teeth, which is a lot of teeth for a mammal. Like we have like 20 to 25, 26 or whatever. I don't remember how many teeth we have, but armadillos had 72 teeth. <laughs> we have 32 teeth. Thank you, Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> But anyways, just learning about that. I don't know how many teeth glyptodons had, but uh, yeah, yeah, glyptodons are like what you get when you cross a Volkswagen Beetle and a ground sloth. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. What about you, Gabe? What's your favorite extinct animal? Uh, my dear favorite extinct animal is this really weird marine mammal called a Desmostylian. Mm -hmm. If nobody's ever heard of them. I was going to mention that too. They <laughs> are amazing. They your thunder though. They have Desmostylian... the weirdest teeth. They have the weirdest teeth. I like to say that they look like a bunch of sushi rolls all stuck together. Me so too. that's kind of why I love them. If, you, mm. if you've never seen one before, imagine you're on a beach in like the Pacific Northwest and you've got something that looks like a hippo put on the beach, make its legs a little bit longer, stretch its face out and make it the size of an elephant. That's a Desmostylian. They have like the derpiest faces and that's why I absolutely love them. There's a group called Paleo Paradox and that's why a lot of my social media handle is Paleo Paradox because oh. I love them that much. That's amazing. That's amazing. And you have a lot of teeth in the Alf Museum collection, right? Actually, we don't. We only have like a few casts, but all oh, the other cast. museums. I remember seeing them. It, yeah, there were like a couple that we had that were real that I sh that we showed you when you guys were there. But through mm -hmm. all the other museums along the North Pacific coast, they've got fossils just coming out of like everywhere. There's there's more than people know what to do with. Which is yeah, why and it's so weird. viewers are in the Southern California area, like Gabe and myself, the NHMLA has them on display in their new mammal hall. So you can go Ooh. to your own Desmostylian. Yes, Neoparadoxia siciliana, a really, really cool specimen, complete specimen from Orange County, if I believe. Right, Michelle? Mm -hmm. I believe so. All right. So I've got the questions finally. Thank you, everybody who sent those to me because I <laughs> apparently don't know how to use Slack anymore. Okay. So the next question comes from regular non-threatening berries. Great username. <laughs> um, are there any previous videos that you've done that you'd want to make changes to because of su some new scientific discovery? Uh, I can think of like six. 
<laughs> we call it the Eon's curse, no? That the Eon's curse. The paper comes out like the day after we publish a video that has something to say about what was in the video. <laughs> yeah, like I wish we could redo the Dire Wolf episodes now that That's we know that they're that not, yeah. yeah, they're not related to wolves at all. They're their own special lineage. Um, so that would be a fun one to redo. Um, Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus. Oh, I remember that one. Mm -hmm. So all of the Spinosaurids that we show <laughs> in the episode have the uh, skinny theropod tail and not the new paddle tail. Mm -hmm. um, so again, plugging our TikTok, but a really fun thing with our TikTok is we do update episodes. So the Dire Wolves was like maybe the third TikTok that we published because, you know, we, we're not going to go back and make a whole new episode. It's just this little tweak, but we're still going to keep you on top of it. So... TikTok extra content. I mean, <laughs> isn't it kind of cool though that you have this thing that you can go back and redo episodes because science is always changing. It's we're always oh, finding new evidence. Absolutely. And that's such that's such a cool problem to have. Mm -hmm. I know. Yep. That's why this channel is infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Top security. Got, I know we've got like 3.5 billion years of life history on top of new science that came out already about and the Meg episode I mean dang we have found out a bunch about the Meg since we did that episode so there's there's a couple and the uh, um ex the mitochondrial ancestors and mitochondrial Mm -hmm. Eve, for lack of a better word, and the mm -hmm. XY ancestor. Uh, and it has since been found that some mitochondrial DNA can come from uh, the XY line, right? Am I characterizing mm -hmm. that correctly? Because we said originally that it was, which for, it was held to be true for a long time, but it could only come from the XX line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a couple, but luckily it's not like the foundation of the episode is wrong anymore. Yeah. You know? So mm -hmm. yeah. they still are correct they're just missing some updated information yeah yeah that was a great question i mean i mean most museums their exhibits are updated like how <laughs> or <laughs> how many times throughout the year so. yeah all right this next question comes from corgi bob no corgo bob i was uh <laughs> speaking of corgi really quick this is i want to introduce everybody to oh, oh my god oh, oh he's he's oh he's so he, cute he, he, he really wants, oh, he wants me to go on a walk with him. Okay. Anyway, so Corgle Bop is asking, who would win in an arm wrestle, a T-Rex or a Brachiosaurus? Brachiosaurus. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how it would work. I guess it would be like paper covers rock. Wouldn't it be scissors, though? Because it's like t -Rex. I guess, yeah, scissors. Yeah. Yeah, well, t so T-Rex actually had, those arms are really, really strong. They're just really short. And so the longer, the you know, the you have more leverage, the longer the arm. That's kind of where I'm thinking. But T-Rex actually yeah. did have a really, like, he could crush you. He could, like, give you a hug and just pop you like a pimple. So. <laughs> Who would win in an arm wrestle, though, Blake or a T-Rex? Blake. Blake's been doing this a lot lately. I don't know. Maybe There's no teeth involved here. There's no teeth. Uh, -uh just arms. I don't know. Well, we'll have to. So I have a T Rex arm cast on campus. We'll have to do a picture at least. <laughs> Blake versus the arm cast. <laughs> yeah, love it. Yeah. I want to see that TikTok so bad now. <laughs> uh, this next question comes from uh, Jao Silva, who's asking, did T-Rex use its tiny little hands for something or was it just bad evolution? Yes. Okay. There's, I love this. I get this question all the time um, when I'm giving tours because it, they look like, I mean, they're not as bad as the Ablitosaurs. I don't think I said that right. But the ones in South America that literally just have like finger just nubs. Like stuff, yeah. Like they're just. This is it. Um, but T Rex, so there's a couple things. Uh, T Rex didn't stay on its feet its entire life 24 7, 365. It did lay down and it did rest. And so we think that it laid on its belly, so like this, its head, bottom jaw along the ground. And then whenever it wanted to stand up, it did the world's greatest push up to get the momentum and threw its head back and then stood up with its legs. And so what? that. 
that push, that initial push off the ground from its belly was what helped it like throw its head back and stand up from a lay down position. So that's one idea. The other idea that's really fun and I have to be careful depending on the age group is um, they were used in mating rituals. So like one or another Ooh. would come up and tickle the other on the back uh. um, to get said T-Rex in the mood. Um, just a little back massage, you know? Just a little back, little little crab back massage, basically. And, um, but yes, they were strong, so they could grasp and hold with their arms, but I don't think their their face was too big to get to whatever they were holding in their hand. <laughs> I mean, the question brings up a really good point that we have to deal with in paleontology, that we fossilize bodies, not behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times I think people think of fossils as like bones, but we have trace fossils and ichno fossils. And the reason they're so important is that they get to tell us things that the bones don't, right? Like trace fossils, footprints can tell you how wide an animal's stance was or how fast they were running even. So yeah, behaviors aren't always fossilized, but we have a couple little clues that help us out. Can you even imagine? Oh, sorry, Kelly. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Gabe. I was going to say, can you imagine finding like a T-Rex push-up trace somewhere? Oh my like, gosh. I, I mean, does your like, museum the... have a fossil of a kangaroo slipping? No, you have a, a camel slipping. A camel, but a camel there slipping. Is, camel, there's, like, <laughs> there's a, it's one of my favorite trace fossils of all time. Until I learned that you guys had spider trace fossils, I, I, the camel slipping was my ultimate favorite. Um, so once again, there, people, spider trace fossils, literal little spider, and you see its tracks in this. It's so cool. It's amazing. Spooky season. It's Can you imagine lovely. just taking a dive like that and then having evidence of it being preserved for posterity? Yeah. Millions yes, of years people, later, people are like, oh, that camel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do that have guy. failed videos these days. So. That guy. I want to ask Kelly um, about the, what, are there trace fossils that have led us to hypothesize about the laying on the belly and pushing up and all that stuff? Like, how do you, otherwise, we do, how do you? We do have one theropod trace fossil uh, laying down, or at least sitting down. So you can see the tail um, where the ischium and pubis bone pushed into the sand and then part of the belly. So you, oh. there's like footprints walking up to it and then it laid down for a little bit and then it got up and walked away. And we actually, we have that whole series, I believe, but there is one laying down. And then we also have the brooding trace fossils. So like oviraptor, oh. um, mm. big mama and big auntie, those two that um, don't have medullatory bones. So they're probably uncle, big uncle, <laughs> 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 instead of a female actually sitting on them. So they probably acted more like um, ostrich than your normal robins or whatever but th we know that they sat down <laughs> so they didn't stay on their feet their entire lives so they had to get up, up somehow so that's one idea about t-rex's tiny little arms uh, i love science i do too <laughs> i'm always just from a content perspective i'm always really fascinated with trace fossil episodes that you do because you could like um michelle was saying they just help unlock unlock like clues to behavior, which is almost impossible otherwise. And if you think about how many steps you take in your life, like I am one being, so the chances of my body being preserved forever is fairly low, unless you're like me that think about these things constantly and wanna know how to preserve my body forever. <laughs> That's beside the point. But um, <laughs> think about how many steps you take in your life. So an individual dinosaur could take thousands, hundreds of thousands of steps in their lives. So actually there's a better chance at finding trace fossils than there is of finding body fossils. Um, it's super, I love trace fossils. Yeah. I, I'm gonna give like a shameless plug really quick about the spider tracks Michelle had talked about. Those are yeah. from the ALF Museum called Octopod yes. Ichnus Raymondi. And if you wanna see, Too learn much. more about them, you can check us out on our TikTok at ALF Museum. And what's really cool about those trace fossils that I couldn't <laughs> fit into the TikTok actually, was that when they did the experiment, they actually did it, they actually took spiders and had them walk on wet sand at different angles. So now we know the very specific oh, wow spider tracks that they make at specific angles on specific sand that's ah! that's, how, that's how cool that is i, I, love it. I think i think they're so cute oh, oh, they're so little cute. tiny footprints uh, i hate 
There's one person on the Eons anymore. team who's not present in this conversation, and whatever spiders come up, she's- They're like, probably covering their ears right now. Just I have to leave the room. La, 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 yeah. La, la, la. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be friends with that person because I, I love spiders. They are beautiful, amazing creatures of evolution, but as long as they are six feet away from me behind glass or whatever, if I see one near me in real life, I will shriek like a banshee. <laughs> Uh, All right. Should we move on to the next question? Yeah. This one is from Reese H. Who's asking, what is a really cool speculated behavior of an extinct species? Really quick. Love y'all's work. Man, we just, we just talked about a whole bunch of I know, right? Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of another one, though. Speculated behavior. Um, How bad early birds were at flying? Man. Like Archaeopteryx, oh, yeah. Archaeopteryx had flight wings or flight feathers. They had asymmetrical flight feathers, so they could probably fly. But Microraptor, which I said and didn't guess and got it wrong earlier, <laughs> um, was probably super bad at flying. Uh, very unstable in the air. Just, just awkward, awkward. And that one is a little bit better than speculative because we've made a bunch of models of them and put them in wind tunnels and see how they worked at different leg and arm positions and stuff. So that one's a little better. Um, but yeah, like I, man, I have so many questions about dinosaur behavior. One of my biggest ones is like, how did sauropods lay eggs? You know, if oh, you're, yeah. uh, if your cloaca is like three stories off the ground and you're dropping eggs on the ground, like how do you make them not break? Like do you, do you squat? Squats, you right, squat? you have to, right? You'd squat. Do they have like a like a egg depositor, like a like ooh, like the queen of aliens, or yeah. like an alien, oh, or that's a wasp? In my head now. Or I don't, know. I don't I know, like. I don't, mm. There's a lot of nope things, and we may never know the right answer to them because soft tissues, you know. But like, yeah, they, and like if they do just squat, that's still pretty far off the ground, and they're dropping like volleyball sized eggs, and it's. Wow, that's, a, that's a fascinating question. I was thinking also just because I think I've done some uh, TikTok content on this is um, hominin burials. Mm. And what Ooh, other yes. hominins buried their dead? And how do you tell? Right. Intentionality, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet it goes back farther than we think. I would as, think. As most things do. Well, like, don't elephants mourn their dead, right? Well, there's a difference between mourning and purposefully burying. True. Okay. So, like, when did that switch occur? Because I'm sure we mourned our dead. I mean, a, a member of your crew is just, they're done. That's, that's awful. That's heartbreaking, right? But, like, when do you take it to the next step that we are different and make a burial and put you in there for some reason? But or even so, I just did a TikTok recently about how I had some posts to about Homo Naledi and like mm -hmm. in the caves in South Africa. And so it's not like interment, but it would be like a sort of a proto, like a step toward that, right? Where you right. just sort of, mm -hmm. you're de depositing them Putting in like a rock there. shelter or a cave. And then, but, but then wow. there's like also actually digging a grave and burying, which is like another layer of the mm -hmm. real behavior. Yeah. So Kelly, can you help me with this one? I'm not sure if this is speculative anymore, but pachycephalosaurs and their headbutting, right? Is that still yes. something we're thinking about? Yes. And now they've done some research. So uh, what was that? Too recently, it, it, like after the 2010s, it might have been close, like 2019, 2020 maybe, a paper came out and they found a pachycephalosaur dome that had huge pits, like like big lesion pits like towards the top and they were like whoa hey now so this head budding thing it for a while everybody thought they did it and then a group of guy a group of researchers were like oh no that spongy bone that we think is the impact bone is actually young bone so they weren't head budding and then they found this new dome and it's like covered with a bunch of lesions and stuff and so they're like okay let's take right. a step back let's get all the domes Let's go all the domes and we're going to look at all of them. And almost like 22% of them, I believe, had pits and lesions on their domes. Wow. So now they think that it's probably a sexual thing. Like uh, the males, you know, probably did the head butting and, and the females didn't. But yeah, yeah. And they made a model. I love models. 
Um, <laughs> we made a model of these guys and slammed them together at the estimated speeds that they could travel. And the bones did not show much damage. And so at least that their bodies could handle it at their speed they're thought to have traveled. And we have evidence of infected wounds on the head that created the lesions in the skull. So, yeah, they were probably headbutting for sure. Cool. Mm -hmm. That means my favorite Pokemon could exist. Or one of my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have a specific Pokemon based off Pachycephalosaurus, Cranidos and Rampardos, and I love love it. And so when I was growing up, you know, they always told us they, they butted heads. And then as a paleontologist, you learn like, eh, maybe not true. And so I was always like, oh, man. But now that this is true, I'm like, all right, I'm happy again. My it's The little probably, kid mm -hmm. was happy. Some of them did. Not all of them, but some of them. Probably the males. <laughs> Because, you know, that's what males do, is they butt heads. So, Yeah, we kind of yeah. suck sometimes. Anyway. <laughs> you do what you gotta do. Next question. Naru seven times is asking, I would like to ask the hosts what organism fossil they wish they could make a show about, but there just isn't enough information. Oh, wow. Dude, I run into this all the time. I feel oh, like there are a lot. Yeah. Oh, man. Um I, what am I constantly wanting to make an episode about? <laughs> well, luckily, I wanted to make an episode about tardigrades for a long time. And recently, mm -hmm. another tardigrade fossil has been found. So I think we're up to a grand total of three. And we've done episodes on less before. So I think, finally, we get to talk about tardigrades in an episode. Yes! Um... I feel like half the things I talked to, uh, so Dr. Dustin Shapiro is the content, the managing editor, uh, and she's in charge of the content for the channel. And at, half the time I suggest something to her, she's like, that's like a fun thing to say, but we don't have enough evidence to actually, I'm just trying to think of an example of what it is now. You know? No, um, I feel like- I think of what we've said happen. in our TikTok meetings, because Darcy was like, all the stuff that you can't do full episodes on Eons Prime, our YouTube, we can kind of fit into 60 seconds of TikTok. So we're yeah. starting to to be able to explore that a little bit more, which is fun. Yeah, recently we're just... talking about um, poles flipping and the effects oh. on you know to what extent how did that influence living things? Like how is that evidenced? You know, in the fossil mm -hmm. record, and I think that's where where we get stuck. It's just like there could be things that could, like could be correlation, but also causation. Um, mm -hmm. I. Yeah. That's my been... sister's actual research. She studies really? that's like literally what she studies. She's a geophysicist and like she thinks I'm cool as a paleontologist and she'll bring in her geophysics about pole switching and stuff. And I'm just like, all right, fine. You can be the cool scientist of the family. Man, <laughs> magnetic pole reversals are amazing. They're yeah. so cool. They are. Uh, this is off the record, so don't tell the internet, but I've been kind of low-key researching um, the medieval warming period and the extent mm -hmm. to which it did or did not happen and like the criteria, how the... This is the debate about like, there's some evidence that it was warm in some places, but it wasn't warm everywhere and it wasn't consistent uh, and it wasn't like a global event. So it's more about like the way in which we talk about and describe climate events, uh, because there's like, again, there's like evidence that like some stuff happened somewhere, but it's not really clear. Um, the scope of it, you know, it's not really clear. Uh, and is so I'm the, interested in that. And that's the kind of thing that like we couldn't really come up with a definitive story about it because we didn't know what the story is. We can just sort of present evidence that like there were different climate reactions that are actually the opposite at the same time. Um, you know what I mean? So it's not really like what Darcy is usually looking for is like a narrative. What's the story that we're telling people? And this is sort of a case of like a lack of clarity, I guess. Is know? that when the Vikings moved into Greenland? Is during the medieval yeah. warming period? Okay. Yeah. Um, but also it was colder in other parts of the world. And so just because it happened in Europe doesn't mean that it was a global event. And I think that's part of the, like the sort of historical storytelling we've had is like earth was like this because white people were like this. <laughs> um, and so that's also interesting too, is to sort of like the, because we very rarely talk about um, historical times, documented history, you know, mm -hmm. human documented human history. Uh, so that's kind of interesting to me. Yeah. And I have mentioned several times the Allosaurus in Glen Rock, Wyoming, that has an abscess in its pubis, I think. And the guy, I can't remember his name. Is it Bakker? Yes. 
he did a poster at a conference. I think what, you and I both there, or did I read about it somewhere? I think about, you read about um, it. And the abscess, he did some research on like the abscess is the shape and size of a thagomizer spike, like a spike from a stegosaurus tail. And I've pitched that like six ways from Sunday to Darcy. And she's like, it was a poster. Again, it would be really fun to talk about, but like there's, it's not peer reviewed. There's not, there's just like that one thing. So we can't really like, we can't extrapolate too much behaviorally from this one thing that, you know, is disputed. Um, but I just think it's interesting. I think I would watch a video about an Allosaurus getting whacked in the crotch by a Stegosaurus. I would watch that movie. Why is, that's a fail, why that's gonna end up on fail video. <laughs> yeah. Why are we not optioning this to Hollywood right now? If I could make a suggestion for something I'm not entirely sure, but if you ever do an episode about the evolution of orchids, I would be 100% into Ooh. that. That's another oh, one that is tough because the fossil no, record no. is like not existent. Because if you think the thing that gets me is that like all the fossils that we have come from a very limited set of ecosystems and not every single ecosystem makes fossils. And one ecosystem that is notoriously bad for fossils are tropical rainforests. Everything gets wet and breaks apart. And there's an incredible world of decomposers also. So it's like things are just waiting for you to die so they can eat you. Um, and that leaves very little fossil. And so that that gets me every once in a while that there was rainforests like full, chocked full of life, just like they are today. And we will never know anything that lived in them because they don't fossilize. <laughs> uh, the great mysteries. The great mysteries of the ancient world. <laughs> All right, we got two more questions here. Um, I think next... we are actually oh, we out, out of time. time. Oh, yeah, so we sorry. are at an hour and six minutes. Uh, oh. Yeah, but it was so fun. I know I time flies. Myself all night. <laughs> time flies right. when you're having fun. Well, I guess that's it. Um, it's time that we wrap up. That's all the time we have. Once again, thank you so much to all of our patrons for submitting these questions and to everybody who voted on those questions. Make sure you like and subscribe to PBS Eons. Tell your friends. And we'll see you all. Well, I know you guys will see some folks later, but hopefully we'll see you all next National Fossil Day. Yeah. Happy Fossil Day, everyone. Thanks. Happy, Yay. Fossil Day. Happy National Fossil Day.